Today as we come for the table of remembrance, the Lord's table, I'm going to take some thoughts from Ephesians, first chapter, the second chapter, I mean. I want to focus on um, verse 5. I don't want to work my way up to there. You know, there was a time, there was a time when you were dead in trespasses and sins. You couldn't come to God. There, was, there wasn't anything you could do about it. Uh, he gave you the law to prove this, that there was no way for you to get yourself out of that condition. In other words, you had to be delivered. Yeah. Someone had to come in that was already righteous and deliver you out of that unrighteous condition. And you hath he quickened. This is God's work now. Verse 1, who were dead in trespasses and sins. There, there wasn't anything you could do. You were dead. Now, how much, I want to ask, how much does a dead man bring to the table at salvation? You get there in glory, you say, oh, this is what I did. What did you do? You had the sin. That's what you had. You had the deadness. That's what I contributed. I was dead. Well, now we can get the work. See, from God's standpoint, now we can get the, once we can get you dead, now God can raise you from the dead. That's not something impossible with God. That's what this table is all about. Jesus, the same night that he was betrayed, the same night that he died, he instituted this table. Why? So we would remember what it cost to be alive. Never lose sight. This, was, this wasn't like something easy for Jesus. Remember, he, he sweat as it were great drops of blood, contemplating what he was going to have to do the things that are represented at this table. He was going to lay down his life. His blood was going to be shed for the remission of sins. He was going to offer, offer this body that for 33 years he had perfected righteousness in a body. He had never sinned. He had never, ever transgressed. He was a pure, spotless lamb. Anyway... Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You mean to tell me there's a spirit? There's a spirit that's right now working in anybody who's disobedient? Yes. yes. So how is it so hard for us to believe that the Holy Spirit can come in on someone who is a new creation when there's a spirit that's already working in the children of disobedience. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I remember when I used to want to do bad things. But I don't want to anymore. Why? I got a new spirit. I got a new heart. How'd that happen? Jesus died. Took away sin. Now when you fellowship with him in his death... You get the fellowship with him in his resurrection. All right. There's a spirit that's now working in the children of this, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. This spirit played on the lust of the flesh. The Holy Spirit, it, it uses some resources too. It's that new man, the one that's created in true holiness and righteousness. The one that loves, loves righteousness and hates iniquity. See it? The Holy Spirit's working on that now. Fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, can anyone read the first four verses of that and come to a conclusion that maybe we're doing pretty good? We were without God and without hope in the world. But God. This table is all about what God did. So we can come to him. And we could be clean. We could be righteous and we could be holy. Well, how much did that cost? But God, who is rich in mercy, because he loved us so much, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Now look at the cost of this. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. You take Christ out of that equation and it is impossible for God to love you I don't you know all of humanity 
there's no way. God's not saving us because of his pity so much as it is Christ died. See, see what I'm saying? Christ made it right for God to love us. The great love that God had couldn't have been expressed without the death of Christ. And now that Christ has died, yea, rather is risen from the dead, God has poured out abundantly his mercy, quickened us together, and that isn't all, and hath raised us up together. We're coming to this table to remember that we're alive with Christ. Christ isn't in the tomb. He rose from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of God. This table's pointing to that risen Savior. Quickened us together with Christ, raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and it's all focused on what we heard today on this glorious eternity. See, this table, it's till he come, right? It's till he, we're remembering what it took to save us, but it's also we remember where it took us, yeah. taking us to a grand eternity. Amen. Well, today as we um, think about Christ's death and his resurrection, his ascension, it's, it's, he's done the purpose of God. Yeah. And he's brought us in so close that we can remember it. This is a grand thing. Let's pray. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the salvation that's in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the blood of this covenant. We ask, Father, you give us grace once again to remember Christ, to see him more clearly. In your son's name, amen.